a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. If I say bad dog, what comes to mind? Ripped up trash bags, maybe a neighbor's nippy and feisty canine. Megan Parker is a conservation biologist and dog trainer who wants to push back against this commonly used term. In today's talk, she presents a case study of what happens when we find the good in the bad dogs. Midway through the talk, Megan will be joined by Executive Director Pete Capilillo of Working for Dogs. I'm a conservation biologist, meaning I study rare species and try to count them. And I'm also a trainer of detection dogs. And where those two worlds meet is where I live and where I work. Most of the dogs that we get for this kind of work, we scour shelters for, because these are bad dogs and they don't make great pets. And you know these dogs, you go to your friend's barbecue and that dog comes up and she's so happy to see you, she pees on your feet and she drops this big slobbery ball in your lap and you just throw it to try to get as much distance between yourself and this dog as possible. And it comes back and then by 950th throw, you're just thinking, oh, just why doesn't they get rid of this dog? And that's what we have asked them to do over the evolution of time our companionship with dogs, we've asked them to bring us stuff. And they do a great job. They bring us our livestock, and they bring us food and game. And the ones that really, really, really love this, they're over the top. They have this unbelievable energy, just unrelenting go and drive. And we categorize that often as just a reject dog. It's just too much. It's destructive. It's all of these things. But those are the characteristics I like to work with in dogs. Inability to quit, it's not even a desire, it's an inability to quit, is what resilience is. For a dog that doesn't stop, you can train that dog to do lots of things and bring you information. I'd like to tell you a little bit about this particular dog. His name is Ruger, and he's a really bad dog. He's the first anti-poaching dog in Zambia lives right next to a national park where animals are being poached and snared and trafficked out of the park. And even, you know, elephant ivory from the Congo Basin is moving through Tanzania and through Zambia out to ports to be shipped abroad. And this dog is trained to find ivory and rhino horn, bushmeat, other wildlife contraband, and guns and ammunition. I trained him and I found him to be a horrible dog. He bit and snapped at people. He was scary to approach. He was everything you fear in a dog. And it turns out he was going blind. So I take this dog to Zambia. And after four months of intensive training with dogs, they started setting up roadblocks and looking for illegal contraband being trafficked in vehicles along the roads outside this park. And they check vehicles, and by a human doing it, it it can take hours, especially for a bus loaded with luggage. And Ruger just checked it in a few minutes. This is their first practice training on a roadblock. And he alerted, which means he sat and he stared at his handler. And the handler was like, oh, dear. They searched it, they looked through, and they found nothing. And so they're just, their spirits dropped. But they unloaded that minivan, and they have luggage out. And again, Ruger picked a piece of luggage and he sat and they searched through it and they found nothing. And Ruger insisted and they went back and then Ruger hid on a tiny matchbox wrapped in a plastic bag inside clothes. And inside that matchbox was a primer cap, which is an illegal firing pin for a handmade rifle. And so everyone, all the passengers on that bus, all the scouts, they suddenly believed. They believed that Ruger knew what he was doing because he didn't quit. He has an even more interesting backstory. He came off of an Indian reservation, the Blackfeet Reservation in Montana, and he was a horrible puppy, and the owner of this litter shot all of the dogs. Somehow Ruger escaped. He ended up in a shelter in Helena. Someone found him and noticed how bad he was and brought him to us to be trained as a conservation detection dog. He he has made a huge difference. Because of his unrelenting energy and desire to work and love of work, He brings us amazing information. And then there's another dog I'd like you to meet. His name is Pepin, and he's with our executive director, Pete Coppolillo, who's going to tell you a little bit more 
and for these exceptional, really high drive dogs, you know, Ruger is really the rule rather than the exception. And I want to tell you about a couple more. This is Seamus. Seamus is trained to detect Dyer's woad, which is the weed that's in that pot there. So it's a noxious weed. And when it gets established, it's very hard to get rid of. So in 2011, we brought in Seamus and um, Seamus is able to do something that we human searchers can't, which is find it by smell before it flowers. Seamus is, has knocked back Dyer's Woad by over 95%. Thanks to him, we're gonna do something that, that was unthinkable just a few years ago, which is eradicate a noxious weed, a bad infestation of a noxious weed. And this is Wicket. Wicket's one of the best stories. She was in a, a shelter in Anaconda, Montana. And, and when we came to get her, the director of the shelter said, you don't want that dog, that dog's crazy. <laughs> And now Amy famously said, I think she might be the right kind of crazy. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Jackson Hole, Wyoming in 2015. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Jackson Hole. Visit TED.com slash TEDx Shorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.